to my viewers and listeners, it is your girl Melody Almay Bird, and welcome back to Melody Almay TV, the podcast. Yay! <laughs> As you guys can see, I am so excited to have this special guest on my podcast. Yes, yes. This is my very best friend, Farah Charmaine. <laughs> A little background, if you guys are listening, this is my line sister. We crossed Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated back in Lord. Spring 2016, we were 50 girls on our line and I'm so appreciative of AKA because if it wasn't for AKA, I would not have this lifelong sisterhood with this girl right here. We were just talking about that. Like we never probably would have crossed paths before ever in our life if it wasn't for AKA. So it's definitely a blessing. Yes, it definitely is a blessing. <laughs> and I'm so happy to have her here on this podcast. I really wanted to get this episode filmed while she's in town. She's actually visiting <laughs> Los Angeles right now, you guys. She lives currently in Dallas. Yes. So shout out to all the people who live in Dallas, y'all. <laughs> it's lit over there. Yes, How yes. How do you like Dallas? I love Dallas, especially from only living in Louisiana where I was born and raised like mm -hmm. if y'all have ever like moved away from home and it's your first move like you know just how much anxiety can be behind it and fear just because you know it's unknown it's something that's just completely different from what you're used to but making your own story and finding your own way like there's so much beauty in it and just navigating through life yes and that's why I brought her here on this podcast <laughs> because I think we're going to title this episode taking a leap of faith because yes, perfect I'm literally that friend that everybody <laughs> says that just literally doesn't think about it just just goes and takes that leap of faith and just yes. does it but yes. Farah is complete opposite very she likes, safe right? she <laughs> likes to think things through she's very planner. much a planner right and she likes to just scope and have a plan on her life before she takes that leap before she moved to Dallas she was from Baton Rouge Louisiana yes Tell them about your background and where you came from before you moved um, to Dallas. So really, I like to say Baton Rouge, but I actually grew up in Walker, Louisiana. So it's a small town, like right outside of Baton Rouge. If you're from Louisiana, South Louisiana, then you already know, you know, you're familiar with both. I grew up where in most classrooms, I was the only black girl or if, you know, it was maybe one other black person in my class. So I grew up in like predominantly white schools. So I feel as though just being raised in that kind of environment, like yes, of course, my family did what they had to do to make sure that we were exposed to our culture and that we were very much woke, <laughs> but I didn't really get to see it as far as like really peer wise and just going to a school where there was just multiple black people and people that just look like me until I got to Southern. Yeah. Which is why I really appreciate my journey at Southern and mm -hmm. it really helped develop me as a woman, I would yeah. say, for and, sure. And I would definitely input that she is from Walker, Louisiana. If those who aren't <laughs> familiar with Walker, Louisiana, that is the country, baby. The country, the sticks, yes. okay? <laughs> when I, you guys, you know, I'm from Chicago, so when I pulled up to Ferris, <laughs> Ferris little uh, place to walk in, it was narrow roads, mm -hmm. like it, the roads weren't really done, like yeah. it was, it's easy to just fall in the ditch <laughs> you don't be careful and people are outside in the front yard just chilling on their porches because that's what we do like and then she be outside. coming outside with her shoes off walking you know through the grass. it was a learning process because all of my friends they'll be like what wait why didn't you put on shoes? i'm like look we're right up we're just going right here like what's the point right they do not wear shoes <laughs> we do wear shoes do not let her let you tell <laughs> like like we just don't wear shoes okay, like we okay. civilized people <laughs> for which if you're from louisiana or if you're just from the country Black people, we like to just sit outside. After having Sunday dinner, we'll just go out on the porch and just talk and sit. And that was our way of fellowshipping with one another. Yeah. So and, and you guys are very family oriented. Yes. So yes. when it comes to like family, you guys really just build within generations on yeah. your land in Louisiana. So it's really not well known for you to just venture out and move to another no, place. No. So how was that coming from Louisiana and, you know, living far from your family and just trying to live your dreams? So it's always been something that I've wanted to do. I've just always been a girl with these big dreams, you know, with these big just plans that I've wanted to do. But I feel like I oftentimes like allowed myself to just not really embrace what I knew deep down I was fully capable of. I allow for fear or wondering like, okay, what if I fail? You know, like I don't want to have to go back home and be the person that just didn't make it or, you know, and that fear really, really like 
procrastinated with me like a lot of time because I mean even you know like we have these talks all the time like you set your date whenever you were saying that I'm about to go mm-hmm. to LA she didn't care what predicament she was in at that time that date was the day that she was leaving and mm-hmm. that was that I always just really admired that about you wow. and yes and like Melody was the one who I would talk to like almost every day your first apartment when you moved here and uh-huh. you was just like you can do it fair like if yeah. I can do this and come to LA like you can do it like yes. you're going to Texas you know you're from Louisiana it's the next day <laughs> and I was just like I know but you know my family I don't you know like it's just so hard to leave what you're used to but for anybody out there that is in that same headspace like it's something that you want to do but you just your mind is really messing with you and preventing you from taking that step just do it set you a date and say okay I'm gonna have all my ducks in a row by this date I feel like once you set the date it's like something to look forward to so you're gonna already know okay well what is it that I need to get done what is it that I need to start preparing for it to get ready for this move and I set my date even though COVID hit I was just like still I'm not gonna allow that to stop me if I gotta move with a mask and gloves and everything like that then I'm gonna do it like this is my date I'm gonna do it I did hair full-time during that point I quit my job that I was working at in Louisiana because I was like okay look I've built up such a good clientele here at that point I had people driving from not just Baton Rouge area but I had some clients that were driving from like hours away you Mm -hmm. know just to come and get their hair done so I said okay well God has blessed me to be able to be successful with this hair business so I'm just gonna do that full time yeah and if you guys don't know she does have a hair business yes yes yes. custom made beauty beauty. I will leave um well Melody yeah I will leave all the (laughs) she'll leave all the info in there but yes it's what I've always done hair makeup glam has always been my passion so I said okay well I'm giving myself two months and I just stacked y'all like and that was the perfect opportunity while you're still living at home with your parents you're not paying no bills at that point so use that as an advantage stack your money and that's what I did and when I tell y'all I ran it up I ran it up okay and started just applying for jobs because I am definitely a two income kind of girl so Mm -hmm. I multiple streams right right I started looking for jobs and ended up getting a job in healthcare management so once that sealed the deal it was just looking for a place to live and it really took off from then but I think the hardest part about leaving was leaving of course my family but me and my grandmother we had a very very very, very close relationship and you know this was the point where she was kind of declining with her health even though I felt just so guilty deep down inside for leaving her like I just felt like I shouldn't be leaving while she was still sick but she was the one that said go you can do this go and I'll never forget you know the last thing she said to me before I walked out the door was don't go out there and let nobody make a fool out of you <laughs> Y'all know your uh-huh. grandmother. It's like, that's uh-huh. some stuff they'll say. Because uh-huh. you're going to a new place. You know, I'm used to the country. So I'm going somewhere with big skyscraper buildings yeah. and just lights everywhere. Yeah. All these different kinds of people, new opportunities and stuff like that. So it's easy to get caught up in that kind of lifestyle. I feel like she knew and she just said, don't make anybody make a fool out of you out there. And when I tell y'all that has carried me through everything since being in Dallas, with everything, I stop and I think, am I being made a fool out of right now? <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> I like that. I like that mentality. Yeah, like, hold on. You know, because yeah. I feel like the older you get, decisions aren't just as willy-nilly as they used to be. Like, oh, if, if it is something bad, I'll just suffer the consequences later. Like, no. We're at a stage in our life where you literally have to think about every decision you make because mm-hmm. it's always gonna be something that comes it's after. always going to be a after effect, right every decision right and yes. you have the power to control if that effect is going to be positive or negative i've learned to just be very mindful and just use a lot of wisdom when i make decisions yes i know that was a long little introduction <laughs> to Fira, <laughs> but i really wanted to go ahead and get this podcast yes. just, just, just dive in just dive just into dive the in. topics because we have just so much to talk about and i love bringing my friends <laughs> on my podcast because it's just a regular natural conversation a regular flow and i love to have my bed like especially my girlfriends yes. because we can have these real conversations open open transparent. if you guys are listening make sure you rate this video five stars if you're listening on any type of audio platform 
friends. And if you are watching, make sure you guys go subscribe and thumbs up this video if you guys like it and smash that notification bell so you know whenever I make a new video. We're gonna go ahead and get into this episode. Make sure you guys follow Farah on all her social media platforms. Yes. On yes. Instagram, it's Farah yes. underscore Charmaine, yes. Farah underscore Charmaine. <laughs> and as well as TikTok, it is the same. Everything is the same. So Farah underscore Charmaine. Okay, yes. And I'll make sure that I'll link the style seat link down in the yes, description box yes. below. So if you guys are living in the Texas or Dallas area or whenever she's traveling to Louisiana, make sure you guys book her. She does <laughs> hair, makeup, any type of custom wigs, anything yes. dealing with color. Lace. Yes, she's literally bomb. And I'll make sure that I'll put all the information down in the description box below so you guys can she's go ahead. and put y'all on. So you guys can go ahead and the whole transformation you guys just a couple days ago as you guys know my girl is visiting me here in los angeles and it's been an amazing time she's been my first guest here yes. in los angeles it's beautiful in my new place you guys it's so beautiful so i guess we're gonna just go ahead and get into the topic of just taking the leap of faith faith over fear yes it's so easy to be scared rather oh, than yeah. just going for it. But my story of how I got here, I know I haven't shared this on my podcast, so I'm gonna quickly just go over it. I'll just go back from 2019 <laughs> when I was working full time as an auditor. I worked for so many hotels. Yes. I worked. I started off at Hampton Inn and Suites, then I went to Microtel, and then I, I went to <laughs> then I went to Hilton. <laughs> We reap the benefits of her working at hotels, okay? <laughs> yes, yes, y'all. Like, I literally, it was the best. I wouldn't say it wasn't the best. <laughs> it was, yeah. I was miserable, but it did have benefits, but... Yeah. I just was thinking, I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I've literally been working. As soon as I could work, mm -hmm. I got a job and I had multiple jobs. I had every job you can think of and I've been saving, spending everything, been bad with money. And I just learned through trial and error that this is not what I want in life. I don't want to just work for somebody. And even though I was working towards my degree in marketing and I was maybe trying to think about getting a job with my degree, I was like, I don't want to put my creativity and all my stuff into somebody else's brand. Right when I can do the same thing with my brand. So whenever I have my mind set on something, literally she does it. Nothing, nothing can stop, can stop nothing can stop me y'all and I really want to share this because I feel like sharing my story and my journey is like God speaking through me and me starting this podcast and everything I feel like my purpose in life is to inspire people so me just starting this is just sharing with you guys that you can literally do anything you put your mind to so I was walking down the hallways trying to check out everything make sure no burglars came <laughs> coming through because I had situations where they did and I was like I don't want to do this anymore so as soon as I graduated I was like I'm gonna give myself three months after I graduate to just plan my move to LA and in those three months it came by like this y'all yes. like before I knew it it was time to go and I didn't have anything planned I didn't have a apartment set up I didn't have a job I had a little money saved up like 5k and I wasn't really nothing that's like in LA the average rent to spend on your own is probably like 2100 starting off for a decent apartment in LA especially if you're gonna be not having any roommates so I wasn't thinking about that I was just thinking I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna figure it out and at the time I had a whole dog y'all yes oh my god that <laughs> poor dog you guys I just the... didn't know the thought process behind getting that dog during that time you guys if you follow my YouTube channel you know about that black dog that I really <laughs> wanted to be a girl but I had to give him up because my mom was like not going for it because my mom was like I'm coming with you to LA. You're not about to go by yourself. Right. Mama's like, I'm gonna see you Mama's, The plan was nothing was gonna stop me. So I was just gonna go. This was my mom's real reaction of me getting this dog. Listen. Don't tell me you got a dog. Twinsies. What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna take him with me. He's gonna be my companion. I know you was gonna say that. But there's a lot of um apartments that are that are pet friendly. He's really small. Mom, I don't know what the hell I would have done if it wasn't for my mom. Like, I'm glad that she was like, okay, I don't know what you thought, but I'm, I'm coming <laughs> with you. And you're not bringing that dog. Dog gotta stay, okay? <laughs> she said it's rather me or the dog. I was like, dang, y'all. Like, it really broke my heart, but I had to give the dog up. Literally, I was about to drive my car to LA, my Jeep that I still have now. Thank the Lord. This is my second car ever, by the way. <laughs> it's 2004 car, so it's got some miles on yeah. it. <laughs> so I was about to drive that from Baton Rouge 
to Los Angeles and the day I was supposed to drive, my car was like smoking. So that was God showing me like, that, yeah. yeah, don't even put this car on the road. We're not gonna spend no money, waste no money trying to get this car towed to bring it. Mm -hmm. That was God saving me from the literally day one. I think I got a rental and then I drove to meet my mom and long story short, we drove all the way from Louisiana. I met her in Texas and drove from Texas to Los Angeles and we stayed in hotels and we were looking on Craigslist and everything, apartments.com to look for a, um, it was called a um, sublet housing. So sublet is basically somebody's leaving and they're like, okay, I want you to take over my lease. So for 30 days. Well, it's not for 30 days. You can give 30 days notice if you want to leave. Got it. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, so okay. It's, it's better than signing a long term yeah. lease. So okay. you're just taking over somebody's lease. So I was looking for that situation. Long story short, because y'all, it is a long story. Long story long. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't even take credit. My mom found this apartment on Craigslist. You get what you pay for. Side note. But it was this Asian lady's house. And it was like, basically, when you come in, it's like living room. It's the kitchen. And everybody shares a little common area. And upstairs is three bedrooms and it's my room another person room and then the landlord lived right across from my room <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i remember that and then in like the little common area it had the camera and everywhere you go it goes like zzz, zzz, every time you move so yes. like she didn't let me know that i would be being recorded the whole time i'm living in this house so i gave her a show this and girl, I know she was looking. I know she was looking on that camera. She walks around ass naked 90% <laughs> of the day. Like, yeah, and if I'm going to get in the shower, baby, I'm not about to... For who? We're all girls. Anyway, so long story cool, short, <laughs> I was there for almost two or three years I think I was there for two years wow it was a while yeah and I was dealing with it because it was just so many rules if y'all know the Asian heritage y'all know they stuck in their ways and <laughs> she was like <laughs> shoes off at the front and that's fine I like shoes off in my house I don't like tractors so I'm like okay that's fine shoes off but if you accidentally don't put your shoes off it's gonna be like ten dollars cleaning fee no actually no it's not five dollars it was fifty dollars it was a fifty dollar cleaning fee Yes, it was $50 random. I would lock my door because I didn't trust her if she goes to my room. I would lock my door every time I left. And she wanted me to turn off all the lights and everything when I leave. Just like to make sure she wasn't checking my shit, I would lock my door. And wow. she would text me and be like, you left your fan on in the room. That's $50. The fan? The fan on, the ceiling fan on. I like how- Does that even pull electricity? I guess it, I don't know. She just was thinking of a reason. She was very nitpicky. What? And I was like, how did you know that my fan was on if you didn't come in my room? Exactly. She, like, she said that she put her head against the door and listened to y'all. You weirdo. It was weird. You freaking weirdo. <laughs> yeah, so like the thing that just pushed it over was, okay, so let me get to the rules. So the rules was you couldn't take a shower or do laundry before eight o'clock or after 11. So whenever I had dance classes, I would literally just sleep on top of my covers until it was time to, you know, take a shower. And the excuse was is because people had to work in the house. So it's like that would be waking them up. So I'm like, okay, whatever. I dealt with it, y'all. And then, by the way, you couldn't have any guests. So if yeah. my friends were to come to visit me in LA, to like, they would have to just get an Airbnb or a hotel. So I'm like, dang, I couldn't even have guests over to show them like my LA dream. <laughs> 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 so I was like, dang. But the part that really blew it over is that my landlord, she always had her man over. She could have whoever she wanted over. And she told us, if we have a problem with it, we have 30 days to leave. If we have a problem with it, she let us know. She wasn't playing. Her man was sitting at the table having Sunday everyday dinner at the table with her every night and she had a problem with me because I had came home from dance class and I had like a little bralette and I remember I came in I was her minding my there. business yeah I had a bralette but I had a jacket over either way I was minding my business and I went upstairs I guess her man was looking at me whatever but she texted me she was like I don't know what you wear outside but you're not gonna wear that inside my house you need to be dress appropriate that's what I was like all right I'm, I'm about to go yeah I literally try to find a place if you guys watch my YouTube channel I'm not gonna explain that whole journey that was a whole headache to just trying to find a place. I got denied so many times. I only had 30 days because I already told her, I'm out of here. I'm out of here, so yeah. I gotta leave. I had to leave and it's like, I couldn't just stay because I couldn't just settle because I was yeah. like, you know what? But then I had to be real with myself because I got overly excited and I got a little bit cocky a little bit because mm -hmm. I, I was just like, all right, I'm out of here. And then I got denied. <laughs> I got denied in the place where I really, really wanted that I really, really wanted to move in. And I wanted to get another dog at that point because I was like, I never had a dog at this point. I never had a dog that I could keep. Yeah. So I had to be real with myself. I said, I can't afford a place on my own right now. So I had to roommate with somebody else. And thank God, my line sister's mama was my roommate. <laughs> I can 
finally tell you guys now oh, that yes. I moved out of this situation, but like I've been there for like two years and I loved it. It was like a whole house yes. to myself basically because she was never really there. So it was a blessing, but I just moved into this new place. Long story short, I moved into this new place because she said that she wanted to, you know, move closer to LA because we were a little bit further out. It was honestly God telling me like, yeah. it's time for you to finally move and actually move to a place that you dreamt about when you first moved to LA. So even though it took four years for me to mm -hmm. get to here, I was just telling her yeah. I wouldn't appreciate it as much if I didn't go through that whole entire, you know, journey of just struggling and yeah. just, you know, just trying to really make it in LA. So that's just my little backstory. So now that we're in faith over fear i want to really tell you guys that everybody's journey is different yes. so do not compare your journey to somebody else's journey because exactly you never know what god has for you when they say god laughs at your plan literally yes. <laughs> he laughs he at laughs. it <laughs> like he laughs because you think your plan was good but you have no idea what god has planned for you so just trust the process you Don't better fear preach girl yes you better yes. preach <laughs> and i know i've been talking a lot so fair do you have anything that you want to add about the leap of faith and taking faith over fear with moving to a new place piggybacking off of what you said don't compare your life to other people because the same people that you may be idolizing or looking at like damn why can't that happen to me mm -hmm. you never know what they may be going through behind the scenes yes. like looking at social media Exactly. Yeah. Let's talk about social media. Yes, like looking at people through social media and thinking that they may have it all together. Everybody has shit, you know? Yeah. Everybody is going through their own struggles and hardships. So you may never know. They may be looking at you thinking, damn, I wish I had that type of peace in my life. Yeah. Or I wish I didn't have these problems that I'm facing here. So just appreciate your own journey. When you learn to focus on yourself, that's whenever you really start to develop and prosper. If you're too busy focused on the next person you're not going to be able to really do nothing for yourself because you're basing your life off of how someone else is doing theirs so right. just focus on yourself what feels right to you do it and if you don't feel right about it don't do it yes that's you know one. you have these gut feelings for a reason and you have an intuition for a reason trust it trust your gut and i really really want to emphasize you guys what you see on social media 90 percent of the time isn't real right it's not real it's a fabrication and that's why i really want to show my raw journey because a lot of people on social media show you the glitz and the glamour and the luxuries of life mm -hmm. and they don't show you the struggles and how they got there all the times they was broke crying hurting and you know and it's good to show that side because you know when you do show that side and i'm speaking to those who are social media influencers i want you guys to like be real because when you open up and show that side of the struggle people can't actually relate, relate to yeah. you people can't relate to perfection no nobody's perfect i want you guys to just be real with yourselves and just know that what you see on social media is not real life and don't try to emulate what you do see on social media because it's literally you trying to reach something that will never be reached <laughs> so exactly. okay so more Moving forward, let's go ahead and talk about girl stuff. Let's, let's just talk about little girl stuff. <laughs> a little girl talk. Yeah, a little girl talk. Let's just insert this little girl talk because that's why I brought my girl on because we're very much a girl's girl. Yeah. So let's just talk about how different we are. I'm a very emotional person, so I'm a cancer, y'all. If Shout out to the Cancers, Team Cancers. Like, I'm just, like, I like to love. I always think about other people, how they feel and stuff, and I always ask them how they feel. I just feel how people feel. And, yeah. like, what are you? What, what is your sign? So I'm a Libra. <laughs> I'm a Libra. So I'm very sensitive as well, but mm -hmm. I believe in a guard. Yeah, you know, yeah. I believe in not really being so open, I feel like, with my emotions right off the back. Y'all see my emotional uh -huh. side because I'm very vulnerable and transparent with y'all. But if it's someone that I'm just encountering, I'm just very protective with my energy, if that makes sense. Like, I have to observe the room first. And my Libras, y'all know. Y'all know. Like, it's Shout like. Shout out to the Libras. Yes. Comment like, below if you're we, a Libra. <laughs> we have to check everything out first. Like, okay, what can I or can I not say around this person, mm -hmm. you know? Or how much of this person can see the true fair, you know? And yeah. not just saying that I have these multiple personalities. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't allow for everyone to see just raw me right off the back. Because you just never know what people's intentions are. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know if that's just me for which is something I've been really trying to figure 
figure out now that we're talking about it. Is this something that I am just super paranoid about because I have been, you know, in situations in the past where I've allowed myself to open up and kind of been burnt. So is it like, you know, maybe PTSD from that or is it just how I am? I don't know. I think it's just how I am. Like I have to read the room first before I allow myself to fully just be open and transparent with people. What do you think about the soft girl life? I feel like it's whatever you make it. I feel like soft girl life isn't just a woman in a relationship. It can be a single woman. When I think of a soft life, I think of a peaceful life. Mm -hmm. I think of you not having drama in your, you know, just really drama that you're entertaining or just things that you can avoid, like bad relationships, toxic relationships, toxic people. Mm -hmm. You're just in your soft era. Like you're like, blind to the bullshit basically yeah and, and it's like you're not letting that stuff affect you exactly you're not being aggressive about it you're like oh, okay yeah, it is what it is. it is what it is you know i'm gonna let you deal with that over there but mm -hmm. me i'm gonna stay over here and protect yeah. my peace yes. you know so when i think of soft girl life i think that's what it is and i think that of course everyone can have their own definition of it but mm -hmm. me personally i feel as though it's not just someone that's in a relationship with someone and oh my man took me out my masculine yeah. era you know i feel like we're gonna get into the relationship yeah, so. aspect, but <laughs> but you know yeah, yeah just you're at peace you're doing your own thing. What are some things that you do for self-care that's just for you? <sighs> that's actually something that I'm still learning to do because I feel as though we think that buying a new outfit is self-care or mm -hmm. getting your hair done or getting your makeup done is self-care. But really, I feel like for me, that's normal shit because I'm a hairstylist and makeup artist but self-care for me is just taking off sometimes I will put in a mental health day at work mm -hmm. in a second <laughs> yes okay this is self-care me just getting away from Dallas for a bit just coming to see my lion sister and us just not really even having any specific plans of doing anything just being with my girl and just having a good time just being with one another you know I feel like that's self-care so it's whatever you make it something that you don't really have the opportunity to do every day, but that you just want to reward yourself with. Yeah, it's just something that brings you peace. Yeah, something that brings you peace. Wow, that's amazing. I feel like, okay, let's just go into the relationships. Cause I feel ah! like it all, it all kind of, <laughs> that's what it boils down I feel like to, we should talking just, about guys, yeah, talking I feel about like, relationships. I feel like relationships with just like romantic and platonic, how can we live a soft life in aspects of a relationship? Cause I know that some people, especially men, kind of take that as a weakness. Some people mistake soft as submission submissive how do you feel about that there's nothing wrong with being submissive in some way to your man because i do feel as though a man is supposed to lead but the thing that i feel as though society gets mixed up and like men and women get mixed up a lot is that submissive doesn't technically mean okay you're my master i do everything you say you know yeah. you're in control i feel like a lot of men have to understand that you can't just go to a woman and be like okay you need to submit to me i'm in control i'm the lead i'm the man yeah I'm the man. like i'm the man i'm the man i'm because let's be real this is the era of women you know mm -hmm. where women we doing what we gotta do it's a lot of women that are at these higher positions and women that are just going out here and grinding and getting it this is just the reality of how it is today. You know, I feel as though a lot of men may be not threatened. I don't want to seem like I'm just saying like, you know, oh, they can't take it. But a lot of them don't really know how to deal with it without having that mentality where it's like, no, wait, hold up now. Like I'm the lead, you know? Mm. And I've had men that I've been with in my past, that more controlling type. And then I've had a man that allowed me to be the woman that I am mm -hmm. and really put me in that softer aspect to where I didn't feel as though I had to be so defensive about the fact that, yeah, I work a job, yeah, I do hair, but still allow for me to feel feminine and mm -hmm. soft and not like I had to constantly try to prove myself or prove that I wasn't trying to be this masculine person or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's such a touchy subject these days it really is i just feel as though if there was really understanding on both sides then things will work out a lot better men need to understand that with proper leadership a woman will naturally submit to you yeah you wouldn't have to say listen to me you wouldn't have to say i'm in control like it would be understood and the man would know okay that's my woman and this is what she specializes in so i'm about to sit back and i'm gonna listen to her mm -hmm. so i feel like it's all just about being comfortable with yourself on mm -hmm. both sides so that it's not that like ego you know that ego testing back and forth i completely agree with you but i do see a lot of situations and i really want to speak about this because some women get lost in the submission aspect 
mm -hmm. a lot of women they want to really cater to the other person that they forget about catering to themselves and i see a lot of that like especially in southern women make sure your husband is okay make sure you got food on the table make sure the house is good you really more so thinking about other people instead of just thinking about yourself and i really want to highlight this especially women who are in a relationships and you really love him so much and you just want to make him happy you're just giving 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 and it seems like it's not enough I want you to just take that moment and just step back and think about what do you want? What makes you happy? And if this relationship isn't really making you happy, then just take that step away. It's gonna be hard. Trust me, like we've both been, <laughs> and we're gonna talk about that. We've both been in relationships where it's been years and we really love that person, but it took us a long time to get over them. But it's just like a drug addict. You gotta go through that right. little withdrawal phase. Yeah. And then on the other side is thinking like, wow, I did not need that drug. Right. I was I really, really sitting I did not there need that putting drug. myself through that. Just willingly. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone has been through it, men and women. That is very important. You come first. It is very easy to get caught up into, I just want to make him happy type of mindset. I don't know if I would label it specifically just Southern women. I see a lot of Southern women from just from my perspective that really For which I guess, I guess you can say that because you are from up North and yeah. I feel like y'all yeah. um, don't we, be we, we, like, we, we be like, oh, who you talking to? Yeah, yeah. Who, you can get up, you get hands and feet, you make your own meal. What the hell? Yeah. That's that's true because you know growing up in a home I did see where my grandmother she fixed mm -hmm. my grandfather's food every day and mm -hmm. put it on a plate and, and put I it said on I the would table. never like <laughs> well, I, well not every day but it's just like they expected a meal on the table like I don't want my man to expect that every day like only only if I want it if I feel if I feel like you know. You know, we it should be both. I should feel like it should be. Well, 50, yeah, 50. of course, of yeah. course. You know, like the man caters to the woman in certain ways, and then the woman came caters to the man in certain ways. Yeah. For which, you know, where I'm from, that was mainly through cooking, taking care of the house, making yeah. sure that everything was in order. They control the man made the money, but the women in my family they are very good with balancing financial business and stuff. So the man made the money, the woman made sure that the bills was paid and mm -hmm. that the money was in order and that there was a good foundation. So up. So mm -hmm. I guess those are just the morals that I was raised around. So that's how I naturally am in a relationship uh -huh. as well. I like to make sure that my man is good. It brings me happiness. I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the older I get though, I feel I'm not really blinded to the bullshit as much as I used to be back then. I still know how to read people. And if I see that I'm doing this or if I'm trying to make you happy. I'm doing, doing wifely duties exactly, without being a wife. Exactly. That's whenever I be like, hold up. Hold up. Okay, you guys, so we're gonna flow through this relationship little topic since we're on it. So first off, as you guys know, I'm in a relationship. I've been in a relationship for almost two years now. <laughs> Farrah, are you in a relationship? Are you single? I am single. How has been your love life? Overall, I feel like my love life has been like a lesson. Everything is a lesson and I definitely don't want to dive too deep into details. How many relationships have you been in? Like your serious relationships? Serious you relationships. Like I've been in three. Three? I've been in three. One in college, one after college, whenever I first got to Dallas, mm -hmm. and then one just recently. And all, how long were they each? The one in college, that was like two and a half going on almost three years. Whenever I got to Dallas, that one was like maybe going on two years, like right at two years. And then my most recent one, it was going on one year. How was after getting into a, like a relationship, after your long relationships, moving to a new place and meeting somebody, and how was that whole transition? Cause I know alone was already kind of scared moving to a brand yeah. new place and dating in Dallas is what? Well, the guy that I actually was with whenever I first moved here, we actually met before I moved to Dallas so okay. I was visiting Dallas with a couple of my other best friends and we were here for their birthday Taylor and uh, Cody mm -hmm. so we were here for their birthdays and we were at this day party and met this guy and hit it off really good and we just talked every day and built a connection just through talking all the time and I was back and forth in Dallas pretty often and he came to visit me so it just kind of started forming before I actually made the move but whenever I made the move of course you know that's whenever we were definitely 
hard on heavy and it was like okay we've been good with the long distance but how is it now that we're in the same city every day and it definitely had its ups and downs it didn't work out in the end of course but you know no beef I really don't have any beef with anybody who mm -hmm. I dated in the past nobody that I have any just not well wishes for you know yeah so yeah. it's just it didn't work out you went your way I'm going my way and I wish you the best how do you do that? Like, how do you? Uh, trust me, it's way easier. Cause said I know than I. Done. Every time I ended a relationship, it always ended bad. Like every relationship I've ended, it's always ended bad. And I've never just could be friends with my ex. I didn't say friends. <laughs> I didn't say friends. Well, like, I'm just I saying, just like, say I don't wish them, you know, I don't wish no ill will. I know, I don't them. wish them ill will, but if I was to see them, I wouldn't speak. If not, I like, probably cool wouldn't. With them. Yeah, I probably wouldn't speak either. But it's just the fact that I don't think of him and just like talking down his name or some shit. Yeah. You know, I just rather not really engage, you know? What's the best ways to boss up after a breakup? Shit, get your revenge body, sis. Oh, like, yes, <laughs> that's it. That's always the best. Cause everybody knows about that happy weight that you get. And I know it's not just me. I know it's not just me, but you know, you get comfortable. You're with the same guy all the time. Mm -hmm. Shit, he want to feed your ass all the damn time. <laughs> all you want to do is right, feed Y'all feed and then go to go to, in bed or uh -huh. whatever. Like, you know, you're not really worried about waking up the next morning, going to the gym. Mm -hmm. For which I said that, the you heavy know, weight. exactly. But I did say that the next relationship that I do get into, I will not lose sight of it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm still going to take care of myself. And that leads back to what we said earlier, you know, still take care of yourself. Even if you are in a relationship, yourself needs to be first. So still, you know, take care of your body. If you was on your healthy girl shit, mm -hmm. be on your healthy girl shit while you're in a relationship. Yeah. That's definitely one of the side effects. Yay. <laughs> but get that revenge body, boss up, you know, boss give yourself up. that time to Grieve the relationship, mm -hmm. deal with your feelings that you're going through right now mm -hmm. and to process your emotions. Be okay with the fact that you may not get closure mm -hmm. and that there may be some questions. Yes, that's another one thing I wanna talk about. Yeah. Is closure even real? No, because even if you do get the answers to the questions that you have, is that really gonna make you feel better? Yeah. Cause sometimes yeah. those answers ain't the answer you want. <laughs> yeah. You know. But what if you really did, even though it's not the answers that you want, but you really wanted to just know, is that real closure? It's person preference, I feel yeah, like. Yeah. You know, if that is something that's gonna help you to move on, then if you can get it, you know, I'm all here for you. But for me, I had to learn that, okay, even if I do get the opportunity to ask these questions and figure out like, okay, well, what was the point of all this? It's like, did that change the outcome? Do I still feel better? about this no I'm still left with the same feelings that I had originally mm -hmm. and I still have to deal with them process them and move forward mm -hmm. so I don't really believe in the whole closure thing anymore I do like explanations especially if it was a serious relationship and we did form a good solid just genuine bond yeah you owe me an explanation what's the reasoning for this mm -hmm. you know like why hasn't this been discussed before why is it just now being brought to the light now and it's you know about to blow up it's just the fact that some things it's out of your control and you won't get the answers to. So you just got to do what's best for you and keep it pushing. Yeah. And the best way to boss up is just to focus on yourself. Exactly. Even if you already have your quote unquote body of your dreams, think about other goals that you want right. to accomplish and just focus right. eagle's eye on that. Before you know it, you're like, who is that person that I was so stuck over? Oh, yeah. okay. And then by the time you focus on got to your goals, he's going to probably want to come back and you're not even going to want him anymore at that right. time. Yeah. You never know why God may be closing that chapter. He may be preparing you for someone that you really deserve. You never know what God has in store for you. So instead of trying to just get down on myself or think, you know, like what's wrong with me or why didn't this work out? Because being truly honest and transparent with y'all right now, I was definitely like about... 95% sure that my last relationship was it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have to go through the dating yeah, shit anymore. That yeah. I was done. You know, like that was my one. Whenever it did end, it's like I was left with so much confusion and just like hurt. Mm -hmm. It's like before I even allowed myself to get too caught up in those just dark feelings mm -hmm. and starting to question myself, you just have to just go to God. If you're a religious person, just mm -hmm. go to God and just be like, I trust you. And that's literally been what I've incorporated in mm -hmm. all my prayers every night. Just like, I trust you. I'm not about to try to figure this shit out. I'm not about to sit here and down myself and say like, oh, this is me. No, just trust God. You got to know that you're a good woman and you got to know that you're a good person and that anybody that has access to you is 
privileged. Yeah. <laughs> That's a privilege, you know. It's literally a privilege. Because you know the type of woman that you are, you know, yeah. and I know the type of woman I am. I know what I bring to the table, yeah. okay? Even if you don't know who you are, you can't find that in somebody else. So you mm -hmm. have to really go through that journey of just self-discovery. Yes. And that brings us into the next topic, which is self-discovery. A lot of people don't really even know who they are. Still aren't. And in like their 20s, there's really not an age limit no. on trying to find yourself. Honestly, I was always a very confident person. Having friends who weren't as confident made me realize like how blessed I was and how my mom and my dad instilled so much confidence inside me, ensuring me that I'm beautiful. Even though I am beautiful, you still always have to treat people well because beauty doesn't last always. All that matters is how you make people feel. But I really didn't get my confidence shut down until, of course, relationships. Mm -hmm. It and humbles I, you. It, hum it, it humbles me. the shit out of you. Yes, everybody got cheated on. And when you're cheated on, you're comparing yourself to other women. That's when it really got to my confidence because I was just like, what do I have that this other woman has? because of a man you know mm -hmm. so that's when it kind of you know tore down my confidence so as I was going on like growing up I had to really build my confidence back up and ensure myself I am that bitch right. like what right yes this girl may have something that I don't have but I definitely have something you that know she what you bring have. to the table yeah. yeah like throughout my journey I just had to find myself and just ensure myself through prayer mm -hmm. and just other people were also reassuring me of who I am yeah so how do you feel people can help discover themselves just taking a break from the opposite sex for a while Mm -hmm. Just allowing yourself to just learn who you are. Learn what you like. Learn what you don't like. Learn what your real love language is. What are your triggers? What do you really need in a man? Mm -hmm. Not look-wise, not physical-wise, but emotionally, spiritually. Yeah. What do you know that you need from a man? And thinking about times where you may be feeling your lowest. Because we don't look like this every day. Mm -hmm. We don't just wake up and just feel like, oh yeah, I'm just the queen top bitch, you know? Like, yeah. There are some times where we feel a little down about ourselves. That person that you know is just going to just lift you up and reassure you that mm -hmm. you're it. That's very important for me. And just someone that just understands you and just learning what it is that works for you. And I feel like the only way that you can really do that is just by spending time with yourself. Date yourself for yeah, a while. date yourself. Yes, yes. Like, I've gotten into where every week, if I don't go every week, I, every other week, I'll take myself out on a date. I'll just get nice looking for myself, whether if that's going out to eat, going to the park, oh. something simple. Like, I just do it. I just spend time with myself. So, yeah. and it's really during that time that God allows for just people to just pop up in your life that you never even you expected never, yeah. coming. Mm -hmm. Don't go looking for a man. Yes, You yes. know, the man is supposed to find you. And yes. when he finds you, if it's the right one, mm -hmm. you're going to be everything that he wants right off the bat. Like, I believe that. Like, every woman deserves to have someone that feels that way about them. It doesn't always have to be a man that can make you feel good. Like, exactly. my, my best friend makes me feel good every exactly. time I call her. Which is why I'm here. Yeah. Literally, just have that escape. Like, she just literally got out of her relationship and I feel good I feel like so this is what I needed I went through my breakup it's been like maybe like almost two months now yeah, so it's pretty fresh yeah, yeah so it's still pretty fresh I'm still processing a lot of things definitely not looking for nobody right now yeah. or have your fun yeah or interested or even just having fun like I'm just not really interested in yeah. just like dealing with guys right now mm -hmm. just really focusing on okay like okay so what does God want me to do next for me I just tried to think about a time where I knew that I would just feel just happy again, you know, mm -hmm. just happy and just okay. And I thought about you. <laughs> and of course, you hit Melody up. And I was just yeah. like, look, um, I'm about to come. What weekend you gonna be yeah. at home? You got anything planned? She was like, well, you know, I'm free. <laughs> and yes. I booked my flight that day, and here we are. So yes, and it's I'm good so to have friends like that. Yes. Since we're coming out of relationships let's talk mm -hmm. about friendships we were just talking about this with our lines to speak on the other day about reliable friends mm -hmm. i know i was talking about reliable friends mm -hmm. it's a difference between having a friend that you can really call a friend and a friend that's a reliable friend and when i mean reliable meaning that no matter what situation they're in no matter what they're doing they're going to be there for you yeah you can stay at their house right. with, without any questions asked they will take you in they will cover you and be there for you. Right. That is a reliable friend. And now that I did think about it, I'm like, I really only have a handful of reliable friends. And I want y'all to really think about that. Who would you really call a reliable friend in your circle? 
think about that and really navigate who would you really call a friend then you shouldn't call them a friend if they're not reliable i feel like so reliable is one of the qualifications in order to be considered a friend anybody yeah. else is just more of an associate yeah or somebody that you may be friendly with you know yeah but a friend, if I call you my friend, you know, I have friends and then I have like my best friends, people that I have a tighter bond with, but I would never use the word friend if I know that I can't rely on you. Like I have my ones that I know that I can be completely just vulnerable with, just that know everything about me in and out. But I feel like anybody that I use that word friend with, mm -hmm. whether if I have that type of connection with them or not, I can still count on them. And I've realized this brings us kind of like back with the whole journey of self-discovery and trying to move to LA y'all. It's been four years since I've been in LA and I have one friend to show for it. So <laughs> like, what does that really say? As you guys know, I haven't really spoke about this, but I did have a friend that I was friends with for a very, very long time. And I'm not a person who is going to talk down to somebody who I did consider a friend. So I never will disclose of why we actually fell off because it really wasn't anything really super big. And to be honest, I really don't know why we did fall off. You know, ever since that friendship that I really thought was going to be lifelong, long friendship I really haven't made any other friends ever since then and I feel like when it comes to meeting people in LA you have to be very careful who you call friend because a lot of people just want to benefit off of you just from your status or how much money you have or what you can do for them. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm just very, very careful Protective, who I call yeah. friend. Like if I call you friend, that means you, you are a good person, okay? Yeah. If I call you friend, like, and I, you have to prove to me that you are a friend before I call you friend. I can't just meet you be like, oh yeah, this is my friend. Like, right, you know, right. no. This so girl right here. Right, what, <laughs> you, what you feel about that? I've met one person in Dallas that I did not know. Cause a lot of people that I do hang around in Dallas with, are people from Southern. So they were people that I've already had prior relationships with, prior friendships with, so I kind of knew them already. But as far as just meeting somebody just strictly from Dallas, there is one girl who I do consider her as a friend. She has proved that she is worthy of being considered a friend. And my way of meeting her was through one of my close friends, Blossom. So mm -hmm. being it that I trust her, like anybody that you may bring me around. I know mm -hmm. that you wouldn't bring me around anybody that yeah was not genuine or had like ill intentions because I know that you wouldn't hang around anybody yeah. like that. So it's like, yeah, I kind of already felt a little comfortable with her just because I knew that, okay, I know my girl ain't gonna hang out with you if you down bad. So, you uh -huh. know, <laughs> I guess I can be in the same room with you. But yeah. we did have to form like our own little bond in order for me to really truly feel comfortable. Uh -huh. But like I said from the beginning, I'm not really that much of an open person. <laughs> yeah. So it really is if... I'm able to just be comfortable around you and just be open and be myself, then you're a pretty good person. So, okay, I asked every one of my guests oh, this Lord. question. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. So, what was your first thoughts when you met me? Like, how first thoughts? This silly ass. <laughs> <laughs> Melody, Melody, she really keeps me outside of my show, I would say for sure. Mm -hmm. Whenever I do want to just be very closed in and just. No, Mel, it's just like, Farrah, just, you know, just, just uh -huh. live, Farrah. You're the kind of friend that I feel like every friend group needs. Uh -huh. Just like keeping everybody just alive and just so optimistic and just willing to see the good in people and to just be positive. I'm very on guard. Like, just like yesterday, yeah. we was out and some random guy was just like on the... <laughs> It was a homeless person, y'all. And I don't have anything against homeless people, okay? Yeah. But you have to be cautious with your surroundings. And I'm very cautious with my surroundings. Melody, Melody lives like she's the only person on this earth. So she's like, Fira, she, he's just, so, you know, the dude. He minded his business. No, he was not. He was yelling very he aggressively. He was on drugs. <laughs> You even worse. So even more reason why I was on, you know, guard. So I was just like, okay, well, you know, I wasn't saying nothing to the guy. I was just like, okay, well, let's just, you know, move up here. Like, let's just keep walking. And she's like, she got scared. Vera, you. you know, there's no reason for you to be afraid. I'm like, I'm not afraid. I'm just saying, let's keep walking. You know, yeah. like, let's get to where we going. Melanie's just very, she's just full of life. And you keep me very full of life and just open to just have fun. Farrah's like the mama of the group. I'm gonna put the little clip where she's like, Shut the fuck up, <laughs> you <laughs> me so hard. Come on, get right with it, let's go. Just 
just leave that in the past, I feel like. But there has She they, gonna get us together they, every time. I feel like if I don't do it, who else is? <laughs> you know, like. My mama loves Vera, y'all. Everybody's she, mama loves me. What do y'all do without me is what I really want to know, like. Yeah, literally. My thoughts when I first met Vera, like, honestly, we didn't really get close, close until so after. After we crossed and everything. And it's like, we almost gravitated to each other. Ever since we, like, start talking, it's like we never stopped. Yeah. Like, it was just like we were. The perfect balance. Yeah. You know. You know when they say opposites attract? Yes. We literally were like attracted like Definitely this, the perfect and we balance. Stay stuck. Like Def I thing. cannot get rid of her, y'all. I just literally can't. I just can't get rid of and her. And it's almost ten years. What is it almost ten years? It's just, we crossed in twenty sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Seven years. Seven years. Seven years. Almost 10 years. Three shy from a whole decade of knowing this lady. And yes. that's so crazy. And it's a whole lot of time. So moving forward, I really wanted to get into this because y'all, I'm a big movie girl. I'm a big show girl. I like to watch movies, especially movies. And I wanted to ask, Serious, <laughs> I wanted to have a movie recommendation segment where we just recommend movies. <laughs> and TV shows that we like. The number one movie. We're going to say it. One, two, three. The, the reading. reading. Okay. The okay. Y'all. Don't I am, tell them. Don't tell I'm them. I'm not going to tell okay. them. All I'm going to say is that. If you're someone like me that does not like to watch Killing, and it's crazy because I love the shows BMF, Power, everything with Killing, I like it. That's but crazy. I just cannot watch Killing. So even when those parts do come up, it's just like I have to cover them. I, I Y'all, we was watching Black Panther, and I was like, how can you watch this, but you can't watch something? Because it's something quick. Like, you be wanting to watch the movies where it's just like blood just gushing out of all their noses. <laughs> Y'all, me and Keanu was watching, and she was like, Y'all are sick for watching. And they're just sitting there laughing. Laughing while a knife is going in the person's heart and they just have blood just coming. I'm like, what is wrong with y'all? Like, not real, just, Vera. Okay, I get that, but it's just so graphic looking. Like, it just looks like it hurts. I just tell, I just keep on having to remind myself it's not real. Yeah, no. It's not it real. It just looks too real for me. But we definitely would recommend the reading. It's good, though. It's good. Yes. It's you, really good. You can watch it, I think, on BT Plus. Oh yeah, it was BT Plus. It was BT Plus. It was on BT Plus, y'all. It was with Monique. <laughs> Monique did her shit, she, okay? Monique needs her flowers. Y'all, I really want to put this in this podcast, y'all. She needs her flowers. Because Monique needs her flowers. She is so slept on. She is such a good actress. And I know yeah. that she's been blackballed in the industry because she spoke up for what she is needed to get paid as a black female actress, comedian yeah. mm -hmm. and actress. She's literally one of the queens of comedy. And she doesn't get paid as much as the kings of comedy. Why y'all even? And try to blackball her in an industry just because she spoke up for herself. She has a talent to show for herself, yep. so give the girl her flower. Yeah, okay? it's really good, y'all. Y'all gotta check it out. Check out the reading. What else would you recommend? Of course, you know my shows, BMF. Power is about to come back on. I'm so excited. Oh lord. Power Ghost. As far as sisters, shows. sisters, sisters. Yeah, I got was just on and off of sisters. I feel like. Yeah, but, I just put her back on, y'all. I'm yeah. literally watching it back from season. Yeah, we're one. starting from season one, so I have a lot more to cover in sisters, but. All the Queen's Men, I do like that. Okay. I'm going to have to check that out. All the Queen's Men is really good. It's yeah. very vulgar, but it's good. Fractured on Netflix. It's really good. You got to watch that. Fractured. It's scary. It's not scary. It, it is a little gory, though. I'm not see, gonna see. I did give you a warning, but it's really good. It's really, really good, though. Fractured is on Netflix. Definitely watch that. But yeah, you guys, I'm going blank right now, but I definitely <laughs> will have another segment during my next podcast of movie and show recommendations so you guys can watch shows that I recommend because I'm a big movie critic and TV show critic. My favorite genre is a good thrill. Like, I like a situation where, like, you're in, like, especially like a real life situation where you have to get yourself out of it, a survival would you just want to watch that for because it's like you know god forbid if you were in that situation you would know but do you really think it's gonna play out like the movie i will hope it plays out good but <sighs> I, I would hope not that it don't happen in the first exactly, place exactly exactly we're gonna go ahead and move on to this next last couple of segments i feel like this podcast is going really it good. really is because it's this is really like how we talk like yeah we'll just sit up on the couch and just talk for hours so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next topic which is working out and weight loss so starting off with 
me, I guess. I guess since this is my, my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I've been blessed to be the same weight my whole entire life. And I've been always really active. You guys know I've been dancing my whole entire life. My dad is like a super nutritional person. Like we never ate McDonald's, nothing fast food. I grew up, he made salads, beans and rice. And that's it. And that's mm. what you eat. Like he's very, 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 very healthy. So like I've always had that healthy mindset. It's just like, you know what? Meat is not needed. I'm a good sides girl. Like I like the macaroni and cheese <laughs> candy yams and I can just eat those just the size. I don't need the meat like I really don't I've learned now to kind of enjoy working out I always resented it honestly because I never had a six pack my whole life like I always wanted a six pack I wanted to be good but I never couldn't just like stay consistent to get it <laughs> so I was just like okay if I want this if you keep on doing the same thing and expecting the same you're results, gonna results you're yeah. not gonna get results so I was just like I can do something different so I just learned to enjoy working out and how I have learned enjoyed working out is by distracting distracting myself <laughs> when I say that I mean I literally have to have my headphones and I have to be watching a show or something that would distract me while I work out to like get my mind off being so tired and wanting to just stop on the set if I don't have music or, or something playing to entertain me I'm gonna want to go upstairs and go lay down <laughs> yes that's one way I get through of it and I've also learned that I like to run I don't like running on a treadmill but I like to be outside like I feel scenery. like the scenery kind of yeah. distracts me and I don't know I just like that I've always liked that so that was kind of my journey of my workout and my health how was your journey well growing up is way differently than yours because mm -hmm. I grew up in a home with my grandparents and my mm -hmm. mom so of course there was a full cooked breakfast every morning cool. dinner like even whenever we get off the school bus like my grandmother she would keep me and my cousins until my mom and aunts got off of work it would be like a full course meal you know I grew up down south around a lot of food so my weight was always very up and down you know I always been a thick girl it really took me getting to college and just wanting to just lean out like I wanted to lose weight mm -hmm. and that's whenever I learned that that was my motivation I've always been somebody that whenever I put my mind on something and I really just I'm focused on it mm -hmm. I can do it I've done it multiple times you know yeah. where I've lost weight and yes, there's been times where, of course, I've gained it back or gained some of it back, but I always know how to get my mind back on track. So I think that my main goal is just maintaining long term mm -hmm. in a relationship our relationship just maintaining so it's all still a learning process but now i am officially 30 pounds down hey, yay. so getting ready for summer but for me a routine and a schedule and consistency mm -hmm. is everything okay. once i find my routine and i find what works best for me i stick to it and i stay consistent and the results is my motivation just looking at myself every week and just watching just me slimming down even more and more clothes fitting more loose you see your face slimming up it's mm -hmm. just like those little changes like that you start getting more comments like are you losing weight like mm -hmm. you're looking good just that alone is just like the best motivation mm -hmm. you know when you can just see the hard work and the discipline that you've been maintaining just acknowledge mm -hmm. that's just the best feeling ever so I still want to lose like maybe about 15 more mm -hmm. But the way that my body is set up, I guess it's just like my bones, I don't know. But even whenever I lose weight, I still have an ass. I still have thighs. I still have hips. So it's just like, that's just the natural build of my body. I just had to accept the fact that I'll never be a skinny girl. But I'm um, starting to just learn how to just fall in love with who I am and just with my body type you know mm -hmm. I feel like I often resented it just because it's sexualized so much the thicker girl has just become just so sexualized in society yeah. I had to be okay with the fact that curves it's not what everybody hypes up to be like I've had so many just slimmer friends that just be like I want to be thick I want to you know this and that I want to and I'm just like no you don't like it <laughs> no, <you don't. laughs> it's so aggravating sometimes but I'm embracing it it's never gonna change I'm never gonna be this big so accepting who you are and just falling in love with the body that you have and just doing what you can to build it and make the best of it it's crazy because y'all i didn't even learn this until i was friends with Farah. that it's crazy how metabolism works with different people like me and Farah could be eating the same exact meal mm -hmm. and literally i go shit it out and it 
she said that she'll gain like two pounds yeah, yeah. just from that one meal from that one meal yeah literally and it's crazy very up and down and yes. a day later the two pounds plus two more will fall off yeah like it's just my body it's just so weird like that and that's yeah. where i just had to grow to just accept it and just be like okay look you can't control it even though the scale may be saying one thing the measurements can be saying something else mm -hmm. so it's just like yeah yeah you know just don't put too much don't yeah. put too much stress into it you know so those girls who are listening and can relate to you what advice would you give her or him who are struggling to lose that weight and have that slow metabolism like what are some things that work for you that you would give advice for people to lose that weight um what's been working best for me is intermittent fasting for sure clean eating what is intermittent fasting so basically i eat in the morning i eat in the evening well i eat um my biggest meal at like around maybe two o'clock every day and then after that i fast mm -hmm. so if i do get to the point to where i just feel like i need something then it's something like fruit or like a protein shake if you will i'm not really into protein shakes but that's yeah. fine as well and just like tons of water i'm not like a crazy workout person like i don't really lift i want to get into lifting but really all that i do is like cardio i do at home workouts through this workout trainer off of youtube literally that i found so you just got to do what works best for you you don't have to go and pay trainers 200 dollars a week or you know do mm -hmm. all the extra shit just to think that you got to lose weight so just finding what works best for you taking your time mm -hmm. do what it feels comfortable you yeah. know for you just because this person is over here doing these extreme workouts doesn't mean that that's what you got to do in order to be able to lose weight but it's mainly in what you eat cleaning up your eating alcohol like mm -hmm. this weekend has been the most that i've drank in a long time i'm mm -hmm. not gonna lie and clearing all that out and just putting yourself on a schedule getting some sleep mm -hmm. i never really paid attention to how much sleep just plays a part in weight loss like that's whenever your body is really transforming while mm -hmm. you're asleep mm -hmm. so getting those eight hours i've taken that way more seriously than i used to and just keep going if you do mess up and eat the damn cheeseburger that's okay mm -hmm. just wake up the next morning and get back to it don't go hard on yourself don't get yourself down don't just say well fuck it i ate the cheeseburger so i'm, I'm off my diet now you yeah. know like yeah. just wake up and keep going it's a new day yeah. first start and if you do want to make a change understand that it's all in moderation you don't have to drop everything and be exactly. like i'm gonna just start a fast today and just you know hurry exactly. up exactly exactly even just walking you have to walk before you run mm -hmm. so it's just like just starting and just being realistic with yourself you know mm -hmm. you're not gonna lose 50 pounds in a month it's mm -hmm. not gonna happen so giving yourself realistic goals mm -hmm. and celebrating every win that you get even if you only lose two pounds that week still celebrate yourself still say okay I'm two pounds lighter than I was last week. I'm proud of myself. Yeah. You know? Yes. You know, congratulate yes. yourself even for those small wins. Give don't, yourself grace. Right. Don't get don't get down on yourself for sure. Yes. That's really good advice, Farah. Yes. It's what's worked for me because I've I've been down on myself so many times. Like, oh my God, I've only lost three pounds this week. The other week I lost five. No, I'm still thankful that I'm three pounds lighter than I was. So mm -hmm. it's all a part of the journey, all about exactly. a part of the process. Exactly. As long as you're doing it, you're not you're staying, doing it. You're yeah, doing yeah. it. You're taking the necessary steps so yeah. okay Farah. so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next topic which is marriage and kids so okay i love having this topic because it's always been a dream of mine to get married because my family i've mentioned this i think in my very first podcast that none of my family really ever got married like my mom really? never, yeah my parents never got married like my dad's side never got married my mom's side ne got, never got married their parents never got married nobody ever got married <laughs> they just had kids so I'm like, I want to be that person to get married and like, you know, actually, you know, have yeah. a family through marriage and like start that as a foundation of everything. So like my, my kids can grow up and see like, you know, this is what you're supposed to do. You know, you're supposed to get married first, then have kids and then have that foundation of raising kids in a two parent house home. Not only just two parents, but two married parents, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like that does make a difference in a child's life. Even though people who do have single households such as me, as well as you, yeah. we turned out to be completely fine. But I feel like, you know what? That's just not what I want for my kids, you know? Yeah. Okay. 
Yes. So how do you feel about that theory? Well, of course, I have very high hopes of being a wife one day mm -hmm. and a mother. I love kids. I'm like the best TT ever. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I've always loved kids and I've always had dreams of being a wife as well. Of course, being in love, finding my person. But it's nothing that I'm really in a rush for. It's nothing that has like a time stamp on it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to fall into those traps of putting a time stamp on your life as far as what you feel as though you have to have done mm -hmm. by a certain time and I feel as though that's just self-sabotaging like you're just setting yourself up to be let down you mm -hmm. know because that may not be what God has in store for you at that time in your life I do know that it's the right way to of course get married first and then have children but I don't necessarily think that the people that it did slip up and they had children I don't think that's a bad thing I don't feel as though marriage always secures you know that you your child is going to be in a two-parent mm -hmm. household just because your parents are married because things can always happen i mean mm -hmm. my parents were married whenever they had me but two years later their asses were divorced so <laughs> yeah <laughs> i still grew up you wow. know uh -huh. just with a single mother and then visiting uh -huh. my dad for the summer and holidays mm -hmm. and stuff like that so i wouldn't necessarily say that oh marriage seals the deal if you get married then and you have kids and your kids are guaranteed to be straight in the head because no that's not always the case but i do feel as though it is very important to have a two-parent household whether if you're married or not it's just important for the father and the mother to be in that child's life because i will say from experience with my dad not necessarily being in the house with me growing up and just navigating through dating. It's certain things that I feel as though if I really kind of had worked out with him that I would have a little bit more understanding as far as like men later on in life. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like those are some lessons that you really do learn from your dad and it's certain lessons that you learn through your mom. Mm -hmm. And so I feel as though that's the importance of having both parents in your life, whether if they're in the same household or not, like it's just important for them to have that influence. But I mean, it's of course a dream of mine. I want to be able to come home and have my husband and have my kids of course that's that's yes. definitely a dream yes and we talked about this a couple of days ago i believe but we were talking about what kind of wedding do we want to have and i told her that i want to have a huge wedding and that's maybe why i should wait a little while whenever he does pop the question hopefully <laughs> soon i do want to have a huge wedding and probably gonna have it in chicago and i'm probably gonna invite like literally everybody that i know everybody he knows and he's a preacher's kid so he probably the whole church probably gonna come the whole congregation the whole congregation gonna come okay. and you said that you wanted something a little bit more different than definitely that. more different more intimate if our funds are able to just have something big and luxurious like yes i would be okay with that but i'm more of like a long jeopardy type of person so if i had to choose between a big luxurious wedding or having my house i want my house Mm, you know I want money for investments like I'm a planner I'm a future mm -hmm. type of person so mm -hmm. it's just like I don't really want to spend all of these thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for one night mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. that set us back as far as like building our home mm -hmm. and you know having money for investments and to put to multiply that's how yes. my mind works uh, you know that's really yeah. how my mind works so yeah great glad to hear it Bitch, scary ass. Ain't nobody talking to you. <laughs> Y'all, she's sitting on her phone. Those who are listening, that was Siri. Siri, she always talking when ain't nobody talking to her. That's just me personally. Like, I would love a destination wedding, to be honest. Yeah, what destination? Jamaica. Jamaica. I love Jamaica. Yeah. I love Jamaica. And it would just be you and him? Me, him, my family, the and close friends that we could, you know, fly out that mm -hmm. was able to come. Not a lot of bridesmaids, not a lot of groomsmen. I don't really see myself having, like, just a big party of bridesmaids and groomsmen. A big wedding party. Yeah, I, I don't really see that because it's a lot and just dealing with people and it's it's just a lot. It's mm -hmm. a lot. So I choose peace and every, everything I go into and I've seen in the past how a lot of wedding parties just have crumbled just from trying to have these big huge wedding parties. Unless you know that everybody on your wedding party is going to be genuine and cater to the bride and cater mm -hmm. to the groom and really be there for what they're supposed to be there for mm -hmm. which is support 
then yeah, of course, if you know that you have those amount of friends that you can do that with and you have full faith that they're gonna make it about you, then perfect, I love it. But if you're not too sure and if you're just saying, well, I don't wanna hurt this person's feelings and we've been friends for a yeah. long time, so I gotta put them in my wedding. You know, I don't yeah. want them to, no. I don't really crave just like, you know, a big over the top wedding, you know? So let's move on with kids. How many kids do you want? I can do two. Two, <laughs> two, and that's it. It's like it stops at two, or at least two. it's like it's not like I'm not open to a third one if it comes, but not four but or five. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> kids are expensive. Yeah. You know, kids are very expensive. After a while, you they can start taking care of each other. The oldest yeah. start taking care of the little one. But ones. still, knowing how I am, like I would want to give each kid the same amount of attention as I gave like yeah. my firstborn. You yeah. know, so it's just like. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's too many of y'all. That's a lot. Shit. And you know, with each kid, you got to start all over again. You know, yeah. start over from with their infant to toddler to mm -hmm. going to school to going to dances to going to college. You know, it's just like, it's a lot. So I think two, if God bless me with two, I'll be perfectly happy. If it happens to where I have three or more, then of course I'll be happy. I'll make the best out of it. But if I could have it my way, I would like up to two. So what are some things that you would instill in your kids that you see a lot of people don't be instilling in their kids? God, my mom made me say my prayers every night. Going to church, you know, or if you don't have a church home, just educating them on who god is what you is know? what is your feelings about whooping your children like let's say i snuck out the house and i went and stole my mama's car while she was sleeping i went to a dude's house and i ripped her car she chastised me like there was punishment there was consequences for my actions and whether if that was through beating whether if that was through her taking my phone or me not having those certain privileges anymore it's just basically consequences for bad behavior you know so how do you feel about if they feel like somebody did something that offended me or something somebody did something so it's okay for me to hit them I can punch them in their fucking face. Like, no, I don't believe in that and I won't raise my kids like that. Now, if somebody touches you, of course, self-defense is everything. But when it comes to you throwing a first lick and you doing this and that, I don't really engage in that, especially as a black child, especially if I have a young boy. Mm -hmm. Violence will not be my first thing that I teach them. Like, oh, somebody says... You can't control what somebody says to you, especially mm -hmm. words, but you can't control how you decide to react to that. That's one thing you do have control over. And who knows, you may decide to punch that person, they'll pull out a gun on you and shoot you, you know? Okay, imagine us when we was kids. Mm -hmm. I remember how I was, my daddy used to give me my, especially my daddy, I used to be like, <gasps> and my dad would be like, I give you something to cry about, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Do you think that it kind of follows us in our adult life? We feel like that we need to be that harsh to our children? No, because my parents were like that too. Mm -hmm. But I feel as though that helped me. It helped me. I'm not going to lie. That tough love, it helped me. Because I feel like for those people that don't really like to chastise their children or be like, oh, Billy, just go sit in the corner or, you know, that's just wasn't the right thing to do. You may have some kids that may be receptive to that and may listen, mm -hmm. but nine times out of ten, they're not. They're going to go yeah. back and do the same thing. Whereas if you have a parent that is like, look, you know, that's just very assertive with you, whether if it's through whooping you, you getting a whooping, or sometimes all my mom could say was, I'm very disappointed in you. Mm -hmm. Like, I would rather my mom be angry with me than disappointed. Yeah. Just because I valued her thought and perception of me so much and just mm -hmm. the fact of knowing that I disappointed my mom. Like, it would just... Oh my God, really? like, I would rather piss you off. Like, I would rather you be angry with me than disappointed. I would rather you be disappointed in me than get my ass <laughs> And that's just, how we're, that's just how we're different. Like, I really value my mom's thought of me. And if she was just disappointed, like, if she said, I'm just so disappointed. I feel like she just kind of was just like, damn, like, I thought very highly of you in this situation and you just let me down. I feel like it just, whatever works best for you. I'm not a parent, so I really can't say what's yeah. the best method mm -hmm. as far as teaching your child right from wrong, but I know that yeah. for me, whoopings help me. Yeah, whoopings are definitely kind of like being more looked down against, especially yeah. now in our day and age. I feel like I'm going to raise my children in a way where I don't have to whoop them. You can't really say that, Melody. They're children, they're human beings. I know, That's just but, like saying I know, I'm but I'm, but, I'm listen, but listen, if it's it's like little small things i'm not gonna whoop him because if it's like little small things but like big things like you being bad in school like 
Yes, yes, you will get, but you're not gonna get whoopings at, at every little single thing that you do Ooh, wrong. Yeah, yeah like yeah. it has to be a big thing for me to whoop you. Like it has to be big enough for me to whoop you. But I feel like I will be giving my children whoopings when it comes to bigger things. You have to be very specific. This is why I gave you a whooping, and like mm -hmm. I love you, but this is why I gave you a whooping. Now I just gave you a whooping because right. I was mad or you upset me. You know, right? It's a difference. So right. I, I really want to definitely say that. And I wasn't saying like for every little thing, but you know, like whoop for your kids. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I put that across him, let me clear that up. Because I wasn't like that. I knew if I was getting a whooping, I kind of deserved it. Because I done did some foul <laughs> shit, <laughs> you know. But usually any other time, like, my mom would sit me down. And she would just look at me dead in my soul and just talk to me straight up. Just her doing that sometimes, you know. It just really made me see, like, okay, damn. I don't need to be doing nothing like this again. Mm -hmm. And even though you may not understand it then, I feel like when you get older and you remember back on those times, you're just like, damn, I really appreciate her for that. Mm -hmm. Like, just with how strict she used to be on money. If I had an allowance or if I had, you know, of course I had my job starting since I was 16. If I was, you know, irresponsible with my money and spent it all up, she wasn't saying, oh, here, honey, here's some more. Mm -hmm. You know, she would let my ass be broke. <laughs> And she would let my ass be in the negative with my account uh -huh. just to teach me, like, I'm not always going to be here to just throw money save at you, you yeah. and save your ass whenever you decide you want to be irresponsible. Mm -hmm. And it's like, back then, I used to think, like, damn, like, you're just so mean. Like, here are all, you know, my other little friends back then, you know, getting all this money from their parents and stuff like that. But then it's like, I look at them now, and I look at myself now, and I'm like, I'm so thankful mm -hmm. that my mom was like that with me because it helped to teach me financial wisdom and how to manage my money mm -hmm. and how to not, because you don't want to be broke, you know? Yeah. Once you've been broke before, you don't want to be broke again. Yeah, so yeah. you do what you can to prevent that. That's really, really good advice. I really love this conversation. Yes. Like, I feel like we touched so many topics. Yeah. And I don't want to keep you here too long, Fair, because I know you have to catch your flight. Y'all, yes. literally, she's leaving today. Back to Texas. Oh. Back to Texas. Back to work tomorrow. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. But I'm so glad that she was able to so come happy on my I, podcast. I'm so happy I came. Yes. This is everything that I needed. And it just feels good to just talk about what's been going on with your right. life and just get an update. And just share with you guys because ultimately we want to just reach out and touch you guys. Even if we just inspire at least one person, mm -hmm. whoever's listening and that's watching. Enough. That's just enough. Exactly. And that's our motivation for this podcast. So anything that you want to leave the viewers and listeners with? Faith over fear. Thank you. Take that leap. That one thing that's just been in your head that you've been going back and forth with, if you should or should not do it, like stop listening to everyone else around you that's saying that you can't or that you won't be able to do it or that you're going to fail and do it. Say a prayer, ask God to guide you and just do it. That's my advice. Just do it. Yes! I love that <laughs> advice, Farrah. Thank you so much for being Thank on this you for episode. Me. Episode number eight of Melody Alme TV, the podcast. <laughs> Follow Farrah on her social medias. Yes. Instagram is fair underscore Charmaine. Same for TikTok. I think that's all. That's, it. <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. Fair underscore Charmaine. Yes, and I will link all of the links down in the description box below as well as her link to her style seat if you guys want to get booked with custom made beauty. Yes. If you guys really like this video, make sure you guys rate this. If you guys are listening on any type of audio platform, rate it five stars. And if you guys are watching, make sure you guys thumbs up. Thumbs up, y'all. Y'all know that, what to do. Yes, go smash that <laughs> subscribe button and join the May Baby family. And smash the bell so you know whenever I make a new post. And until next time, I will catch you on the next episode of Melody Almay TV, the podcast. Bye. Bye. Bye.